So I have been around for a while, for um, over 20 years now working in uh, security and applied uh, cryptography. And uh, I'm coming more for, from the hardware engineering side, electrical engineering. So my early work has been more or less about cryptographic acceleration, doing things efficiently, embedded systems. We're talking about like early 2000s. And then we looked into random number generators with Bill, right? And um, uh, we had some early results there and we tried to formalize things and, and bring some more theory into this very applied, very hardware centric area. And later on, uh, my research evolved into looking into hardware Trojans mid 2000s. It was uh, considered a, and still is, is a big problem where, you know, you have devices, designs done here maybe, but fabricated, manufactured overseas. So how do you know if, uh, you know, third party manufacturers overseas are uh, not smuggling in uh, kill switches and other kind of uh, covert um, hidden functionality into these chips and devices. We had some of the early results there. And then uh, to mid 2000s to late 2000, 2010-ish, I looked more or less into IoTs, RFID systems. Again, more from the hardware side, temporary resiliency detection, uh, how can you make crypto work in such low power embedded systems uh, while still keeping some kind of resiliency against hardware level attacks when somebody can actually take these devices under a microscope, attach oscilloscopes on it and try to steal the secret key, clone the dev device or whatever. Okay, so since the 2010, I've been looking, focusing more or less on a couple of areas. And uh, uh, in 2009-ish, we started actually with Professor Martin again, looking into homomorphic encryption schemes and uh, a specific sub-branch that just came out and shown to be possible in 2009 is fully homomorphic encryption where you can perform any uh, efficiently uh, calculatable circuit um, in an encrypted form without the need for keys. So you can outsource all kinds of computations to cloud service providers and uh, essentially retain the, the security, the privacy of the data while still allowing third parties to do computation on your data. And that's perfect for the cloud services today, right? And, uh, and specifically now, I mean, that has evolved over the last seven, eight years. And we had some of the, uh, I think the, the fastest software developed in that area is, is in our lab. Uh, we have been doing pretty much everything to make it efficient. That was the biggest problem with fully homomorphic encryption. It still is to some extent, but it's getting to the point where it's becoming more interesting uh, for limited range of applications. You can actually do fully homomorphic encryption and it is efficient enough to be used in real world applications. And uh, specifically, I'm, I'm looking in the context of uh, privacy and private computation now into taking homomorphic encryption, applying it on blockchain kind of environments. And um, specifically smart contracts, Ethereum contracts and so on, where you have computation that is done by miners, but the entire computation and can be viewed by any third party. It needs to be verifiable anyway. So, you know, what's the point if you can, if you have a word computer, if every piece of data on that word computer can be seen by anybody. So the solution of course would be to bring in homomorphic encryption and privatize at least the sensitive parts of the contract. And then second uh, big project I've been focusing on in the last six, seven years now, I guess, is uh, attacks coming from uh, hardware level leakages, micro architectural attacks, you must have heard about uh, Spectre and Meltdown, for example, and you know the kinds of attacks we have been developing over the last four or five years have been in the same vein. And I'm gonna showcase one attack just in a second, very briefly. And um, uh, specifically, we break through all kinds of isolation, sandboxing, uh, virtual machines, and so on. Because in the end of the day, as soon as you share uh, a piece of hardware with some, you know, another guest, let's say, guest operating system, uh, execution thread or another instance in a PS cloud or it could be just you know between tabs in a browser it doesn't matter really you're sharing the same hardware you're sharing the same cycles and if you use more cycles then your you know neighbor will, will feel that effect and that's what we are exploiting these very very subtle leakages and we have been doing that for um, you know since 2013 and uh, we came to the realization that um, this is very difficult to scale up because it takes a lot of expertise and long, long time, you know, to reverse engineer these leakages. So 
big question has been how can we automate these attacks? Enter machine learning, deep learning, and AI, of course, the cool way of saying that. And uh, so in the last two years, we have been looking at adversarial learning to develop attacks to fool classifiers, to you know, enable attacks, and, and also the opposite use, where we use adversarial learning to actually um, uh, hide our own leakages and things like that. So we are looking at any way we can take these uh, learning techniques. So that's going beyond, of course, you know, just building classifiers for leakage detection. And um, so that's, that's pretty much what I'm working on now. Um, so what we have done in, you know, just a highlight in 2015, we had an attack on the Amazon cloud. We were able to recover a full RSA key from a co-located virtual machine. Um, and uh, we have done similar attacks on Azure later on. And uh, there was some media coverage. And then more recent work in the last two years, as I mentioned, machine learning kind of work we're building tools such as similar to virus scanners essentially to, to detect malicious leakages coming out of applications that are looking innocent but they might be leaking some data in the background. And uh, more recently uh, we have been looking at different ways to break through isolation, browser classification and so on, again with machine learning techniques. All right, that's it. Thank you. <laughs> yeah,